Welcome to another past HC exam question videos. In this video, I'm going to cover all the past HC exam question multiple choice questions from the 2001 to 2010 HC exams. There's 15 questions all up in this video. And what I'll do in a second, I'll, I'll show you the actual question. I'll read the question. Once I've read the question, I give you about five seconds to pause the video. Once you've paused the video, attempt the question. And then when you're ready, press play and I'll go over the actual answer itself. So, and I'll do that for every single question. So here's the first question. The Australian hopping mouse, Notomys alexis, is a desert animal. It produces urine that is very concentrated. Why is this an advantage for the animal? A. It needs to conserve water. B. It is nocturnal and only drinks at night. C. It has a high intake of salt in its specialized diet. D. It needs to excrete large amounts of water to survive. Five seconds to pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer for this one is A, because it produces concentrated urine to make sure that it doesn't lose as much water, so it's to conserve water. B is incorrect, because it's nocturnal. It is nocturnal, but the reason why it's nocturnal is so it doesn't, it can stay away from the sun. Nothing to do with the fact that it only drinks at night. C is incorrect, and, or if it's not incorrect, it's unrelated to the actual question. And, D is incorrect. It does not need to excrete large amounts of water to survive. That's incorrect. Next question is this one. What is the role of ADH vasopressin? A. It increases the amount of water reabsorbed in the kidney. B. It increases the amount of sugar reabsorbed in the kidney. C. It decreases the amount of water reabsorbed in the kidney. Or D. It decreases the amount of sugar reabsorbed in the kidney. Welcome back. The correct answer for this one is A, because IADH helps us to reabsorb water. B is incorrect, and D is incorrect, because it has nothing to do with sugar. And because it helps us to increase, not decreases, C is also incorrect. Next question is this one. Metabolic processes in cells produce waste substances. These waste, substances, we, these wastes are constantly removed from the cells. Why is waste removal essential for metabolic activity to continue? A. Waste products prevent the entry of essential nutrients into cells. B. Metabolism of waste products produces chemicals that kill cells. C. Waste products alter the internal chemical environment of the cells and the metabolic process would stop. D. Reten retention of waste products causes cells to lose water by osmosis and they become dehydrated. Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer for this one is C is correct. And the reason why is because the actual waste product, especially urea and carbon dioxide, decrease and increase the pH depending on the actual substance, which changes the nature of our enzymes in our, in our cells, and that would decrease and alter our met metabolic rate. Now, D is incorrect because if we actually retain waste, that means we have more solid inside than outside, so it's not going to become more dehydrated, it will become more hydrated, it will burst. So here it says dehydrated, but it's actually the opposite. So D is incorrect, and A and B are also incorrect. Next one is a biolo biologist study the concentration of urine produced by a terrestrial mammal, a freshwater fish, and a marine fish. Which row of observations would be the most likely for these organisms in the natural environment? A, terrestrial mammals, mammals produce dilute urine, Freshwater fish produce concentrate urine. Marine fish produce dilute urine. B. Terrestrial mammals produce concentrate urine. Freshwater fish produce dilute urine. And marine fish produce concentrate urine. C. Terrestrial mammals produce dilute urine. Freshwater fish produce concentrate urine. Marine fish produce concentrate urine. Or D. Terrestrial mammals produce concentrate urine. Freshwater fish produce dilute urine. And marine fish produce concentrate urine. Five seconds of pause if you attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer for this one is B. 
of terrestrial mammals and marine fish have to produce concentrate urine because they have to keep hold of water, so they conserve water. Whereas freshwater fish, because of osmosis, there's lots of water always going into fish, so they produce dotted urine to get rid of that extra water. So B is correct, and the other ones are all false. Next is this one. Spinifex is also called percubine grass because the leaves can curl up into needle shape. The stomates are located in the sunken grooves on the underside of the leaf and are enclosed as the leaf curls up. Which process do these adaptations best reduce? A. Conduction. B. Pollination. C. Translocation. D. Transpiration. Welcome back. The correct answer for this one is transpiration. The other ones are just completely unrelated. And the spinifex, by curling up its leaves, hides the sunken grooves of their stomates, uh, hides the stomates, and the stomates help with when it comes to water loss. So behind them, they lose less water. And evaporation in plants, we call it transpiration. So D is correct. Next is which statement best describes the function of nephrons? A, filter waste product from the blood. B. Remove carbon dioxide from the blood. C. Collect urine from the blood. D. Remove the waste products directly from the cells in the blood. Five seconds to pause the video and attend the question. Welcome back. The correct answer for this one is A is correct because they help us filter waste from the blood. B is incorrect because they don't help us remove carbon dioxide from the blood. That's the lungs. C is incorrect. That's such too general and doesn't really make any sense. See, and D is incorrect because they don't they don't directly remove waste products. Blood helps us get the actual waste products from the cells to the kidneys. Next one is the diagram is a model of an important biological process. In this model here, we've got water molecules, these white ones, detective permeable membrane, these lines, and salt ions, these gray ones. A, salt ions move by osmosis into an area of low solid concentration from an area of high solid concentration. B, salt ions move by diffusion from an area of high solid concentration to an area of low solid concentration. C, water molecules move by diffusion from an area of high solid concentration to an area of low solid concentration. Or D, water molecules move by osmosis from an area of low solid concentration to an area of high solid concentration. Five seconds to pause the video. Welcome back. The correct answer for this one is D. Because osmosis, so this says water molecules move by osmosis from an area of low solid to an area of high solid. And these water particles will move from here, which is low solid, and go through this small part, and then go to the high solid, which is here. Salt ions are a solid. And that's, that's osmosis. This is this biological process. And the salt ions can't move the other way because they're too big, they can't fit through. So the other ones are all incorrect. Next one is, what is the role of aldosterone in the kidney function? A, aldosterone acts on the walls of the nephron tubules, changing the permeability of the tubules to react to changes in blood water concentrations. B, aldosterone is able to detect changes in blood pressure and cause change in water reabsorption to return blood pressure to normal. C, when blood pressure increases, aldosterone is released to increase sodium reabsorption rates, which causes less water to be reabsorbed, decreasing blood pressure. Or D, when blood pressure decreases, aldosterone is released to increase sodium reabsorption rates, which causes more water to be reabsorbed, increasing blood pressure. In five seconds, pause the video. Welcome back. In this case, the correct answer is D. Because basically when aldosterone is, is released, it's released because there's a decrease in blood pressure. Sodium reabsorption occurs because of aldosterone. And when we have more sodium, water follows. And that increase in sodium and water increases our blood pressure back to normal. Now, B was incorrect because it says aldosterone is able to detect. It's not aldosterone. It's our osmoregulator receptors. Aldosterone is just released. And C is incorrect because it says when blood pressure increases, aldosterone is released to increase the sodium reabsorption, which causes less water to be reabsorbed. And that's not the case. It causes more water to be reabsorbed. So A is also incorrect. 
Next one is which leaf structure are adaptions that assist in the conservation of water? A. Central vein irregular leaf shape. B. Large air spaces pointed leaf tip. C. Spongy mesophyll vascular bundle. D. Sunken stomates thick waxy cuticle. Five seconds of pause video. The correct answer for this one is sunken stomates and thick waxy cuticle. The thick waxy cuticle made sure we could have no water penetrate because it was a layer of fat and water couldn't penetrate a layer of fat. Sunken stomates just prevented evaporation and transpiration from happening because they, they hit the stomates. And the other ones are just random, they're all just pretty incorrect. Next one, at the end of a marathon race, a runner's body is dehydrated. How does the body control the two hormones, ADH and aldosterone, to help re-establish normal water balance? A. ADH release and aldosterone inhibited. B. ADH inhibited and aldosterone are released. B. Both ADH and aldosterone released. D. Both ADH and aldosterone inhibited. Five seconds to answer the video. Add the question. Welcome back. Uh, the correct answer for this one is both ADH and aldosterone released. ADH helps us to increase water levels. Aldosterone helps us increase water and salt levels. So both of these will help us get from dehydrated back to hydrated. And all the other ones were therefore incorrect. Next one, which is the most important difference between active and passive transport? A. Active transport requires energy input. Passive does not. B. Active transport occurs in animals. Passive transport occurs only in plants. C. Active transport does not use membranes. Passive transport always uses membranes. D. Active transport occurs whenever an organism moves. Passive transport does not involve movement of organism of the organism. Again, five seconds to pause the video and then attempt the question. Welcome back. In this case, the biggest difference between active and passive is that active requires energy and passive does not. So A is, in, A is correct. Whereas, obviously, this is, occurs in animals and in plants. That's false. Both of them occur both in animals and plants. This one's also incorrect because active can also use membranes. And D is incorrect because it has nothing to do with or moving organisms. It happens for both stationary and moving organisms. Next one is, what is the role of the kidney in the excretory system of mammals? A, to remove salts from the body and keep water in the body. B, to remove water from the body and keep salt in the body. C, to remove nitrogenous waste from the body and to maintain water levels in the body. D, to remove water from the body and to maintain level of nitrogenous substances in the body. And pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. So in this case, the correct answer was C, because it helped us to remove these nitrogenous waste. That was one. And also to maintain that um, water level, which was osmoregulation. It, this one is wrong because it's not there to remove water. It has to remove water if you have too much, but otherwise it has to conserve. It's also not there to remove salt. It can remove salt if you have too much of it, but otherwise it just needs to keep it if we don't have enough of it. And again, here it says to move, remove water. That's also incorrect. Next one is, which of the following correctly compares the urine of freshwater and marine fish? A. Similar volumes of urine are produced by freshwater fish and marine fish. B. Smaller volumes of urine are produced by freshwater fish and marine fish. C. Urine produced by freshwater fish is less concentrated than that of marine fish. D. The urine produced by both freshwater fish and marine fish is similar in concentrations. Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer for this one is C. And the reason why is because freshwater fish has less concentrated urine than marine fish because they have, they produce so much urine that it's just very dilute. So this one is incorrect. It says similar volumes. That's incorrect. The freshwater fish produces higher volumes. B is incorrect because it says smaller volumes of urine are produced by freshwater fish. And that's incorrect. They actually produce more. D is incorrect because it says that they're both of similar concentrations. That's incorrect. The fresh freshwater fish is very dilute concentrations, where marine fish has a very concentrated. So C is correct. Next one is what happens to the concentration of glucose, urea, and proteins as fluid moves from A to B in a nephron? So it's A here and that's B here. And these are the different changes. So pause the video and attempt the question.
Welcome back. In this case, the correct answer is actually A. And the reason why is because here, glucose is reabsorbed, so it moves from the nephron back into the blood, so the actual fluid inside is less, has less glucose. Here, urea concentration has increased. And the reason why is because more or less only urea is left, and everything else has been reabsorbed back into the body. So the urea concentration increases. And here, the protein is unchanged. Because remember, proteins never actually entered. So it's always been zero. It's always been not zero. So it's zero here and zero here. So it's unchanged from zero. The stuff that's gone in were not proteins. They were amino acids. Amino acids are smaller. Proteins are too big to fit in. So all the other ones were incorrect. Next one is the, fe the feature of leaves shown in the diagram are adaptations found in some Australian plants. These are, this says vertical hanger leaves for number one. This here says hair on leaves, which are these things here. And this says reduced leaves, which are these ones here. What is the function of these adaptions? A, assist in plant growth. B, allow the transport of water. C, assist in reducing water loss. D, reduce the impact of predators. Five seconds to pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. All right, so the correct answer for this one was to assist in water loss. These vertical hanging leaves make sure that only parts of the sun hit the actual leaves, so the rest is not affected. So there's less sun, which is exposed to the leaves, which means less water loss as well. Hair on leaves, this prevent, this blocks water from leaving, so it helps water loss. And reduced leaves means that we have less uh, water loss from the leaves, because there's less leaves in general. So C is correct, and all the other ones were wrong. Now, when it comes, this was the last question, but when it comes to all those questions, I hope you saw a pattern. There was a lot of questions from all the different syllabus dot points, which means you got to make sure for your exams, you know all syllabus dot points, because it could be questions coming from any one of those. There's not one most important one. They're all really important. But I hope that video was useful. Thank you for watching.